love to see the expressions on my friends face when they arrive home uh, to my house when I invite them to for a barbacoa it's like and they all go like so good. <laughs> so good and it's just it's, it's, it's those are the dishes that you do make with with love yes and, i agree and those are the dishes that people enjoy the the, the the most because you sit together and you eat together and you chat and i uh, yes yeah. for me I, that is good mexican cooking there Hola y bienvenidos. Welcome to Molly Mama Cooking with Love. Thank you for joining in to listen to our weekly adventure where we talk to artisans and food bloggers and entrepreneurs who are helping us to connect, to learn, and to be inspired and together to spread love one bite at a time. I'm super excited about today's guest. I have Carla here from Mexico Food Memories. She is cooking Mexican food in London. So I can't wait to hear all about her adventures and how she's cooking food in one of my favorite cities on the planet. And she is also, she does tortilla workshops and she does one-on-one -on -one virtual cooking classes, which, wow, kind of fun. And if you haven't had tortillas yet, oh my goodness, you should try them. And please go check out her website because it's gorgeous. Your mouth is going to be watering. Mine was. I wanted some of those tortillas that she had. And she had some, I think an almond mole that I want to talk to her about because I've never made that. So anyway, please help me in welcoming Carla. Hola, Carla, and welcome to Mole Mama. Hola, thank you for having me and for like, inviting me to your lovely podcast. Oh, you're welcome. It's so awesome to have you here with us today. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about Mexican Food Memories? Well, Mexican Food Memories started uh, around six years ago. I It just happened by accident, actually. Uh, I started to put pictures on Instagram pictures of things that I usually cook for my family and people have started to like my pictures and eventually uh, they started to ask me for the recipe and I started to have more followers and my husband came with the idea that you know why don't you just write a blog and I used to have another name and I in order to write my blog, I kind of needed to think about our name. And for me, Mexican Food Memories, the name of my blog, um, kind of um, has everything that I wanted to express in my blog. So I write recipes that I grew up with or that some friends you know, grow up with, or if you go to Mexico, you try that recipe. So it, my blog is full of food memories. So that's how it started. And then one thing led to another one. And one day I had this friend that came to my house to learn how to make chiles rellenos. And she said to me, you know, you were really good at it. Why don't you just start teaching people how to cook. And I'm a teacher actually, I'm a profession. I used to be a Spanish teacher. So I just thought, well, yeah, why not? I combine my passion for food with my passion for teaching. So how that's how everything started. That is so, so, so lovely. It's, it's just fantastic. And I want to know, where did you learn to cook? How did that start? Well, uh, I've been cooking basically all my life, you know, as a Mexican, uh, you usually come from a, a large family, a family with a lot of members and everybody seems to be cooking very well, especially your grandma, your mom, your aunties. So in my case, it's like the same thing as any, probably any other Mexican. So... In my house, my dad was the, the foodie of the family. Really? My mom comes from a, yes, 
<laughs> my mom comes from a really big family where they have these special family recipes that have been in the family for generations. But my dad was like more into, you know, food. And we used to have like an amazing garden with lots of uh, fruit trees and nopales and, and an avocado tree. And he would just, yeah, he was very into food. And he used to actually cook for us all the time. And he would, you know, ask us to help him in the kitchen and he was a teacher as well and as his spare job in Mexico you know as a teacher you, you don't make it so he used to actually work um, as a cook in restaurants so he taught me a lot of the things that I know but also um, I learned the recipes from my grandma and my mom's family so in but yes so since very little, we used to clean beans. We used oh boy, to me too. <laughs> Lots yeah. of cleaning the beans. <laughs> we used to like help to make tamales, uh, clean ca uh, nopales. Mm -hmm. I'm very good at cleaning nopales because we used to help my dad cleaning nopales. So okay, yeah. and I just want to stop there so that if you haven't had nopal, why don't we tell our listeners? Because I have a lot of listeners that that are not Latino, what a nopala is, and and that you're good at that. That's amazing because I would never go near a nopala to clean it because I'm afraid. <laughs> it's like, so can you tell our listeners about that? Well, a nopala in Mexico we eat uh, a certain type of cactus. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but it has to be this uh, special type. So it's basically the leaf of the cactus in this, the, the, the flat ones. And you need to take the spikes of the nopal in order to eat it. And then you can eat it raw or cook. And when it's cooked, you can add it to salads or you can add it to stews. And it is an amazing Mexican ingredient and it's very healthy as well. So. It's so delicious. My mother used to make it with with uh, carnita de puerco, so with oh yes, and a little salsita, and oh my gosh, so mm. good. And then put it in some tortillas. So yes, my favorite <laughs> recipe with nopales is the um, a, a nopal salad, which is ah. the you know with a little bit of queso fresco, mm. and oh, it's just really good. And yeah, it tastes. I think that you can taste the freshness of the nopal in that salad. Yeah, so. see, I've never tried to do it from scratch. I need to, because I always buy them and then I go, oh, they don't taste as good. But then I'm afraid of those spikes, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you know. have the opportunity to buy fresh nopales there. I do. Yeah, so. I do. So where is your family from in Mexico? Where did you go? Um, I'm from Baja California. I'm from the city of Ensenada, and I came here to London 17 years ago wow. and in a teacher exchange. Oh. So my, all my family is still in Mexico. I'm the only one from my family that lives abroad, which makes it more difficult for me because every time they gather, obviously everybody's there apart from me. Okay, so you came from the coast in Mexico, really close to where I'm at, actually in San Diego in Baja, California. So, okay, first of all, the weather. Like, because I, I lived in, I, I'm a California girl and I lived in Anchorage, Alaska for three and a half years and that was so cold. I just, well, good for you in London, it's got to be. Um, you know, it took me, I'm not going to lie to you, it took me a long time to kind of um, to kind of get used to the weather and kind of realize that this is where I'm going to live for the rest of my life, probably. <laughs> Hopefully my husband will want to retire in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it took me like 10 years that every single winter I would complain Mm -hmm. And every single winter, I would just be miserable. And because I'm, yeah, 
I uh, there's change. some days. I mean, the, sometimes the, we don't see the sun in a week. Mm -hmm. It's really bad. So I'm still don't I haven't get used to it. But um, you know, I have really good friends, and I enjoying what I do. So I feel that um, I I already settled now. That's so great. I feel happy. <laughs> Yeah, well, and what and London is a lovely city. Yeah. I mean, it's I, I've been there many times, and lovely people. It's so multicultural. There's so yes. many. Oh, it's just that's what I wonder. Amazing. Of, I think that that's the main thing that I love about London that you feel that you belong, that you welcome. Nobody mm. sees you in a bad way, and that you know there's so many things to do as well. So I I love living here. The only thing that I still not very happy about is the weather, mm -hmm. but apart from that, everything else is fine. Yeah, no, I I have great fond memories of of all my trips there for work, and just I've met so many different people, and it's like you said, very welcoming, very yes. warm. Um, yeah. Yeah, and now now I'm addicted to all the TV series that I have to do. That oh, are yes. Do good, make good TV there. Very good yeah. TV. Yeah. Okay, let me get us back to food. All right. So your photography on your website is stunning. Like, oh, seriously, I, I, I was like, is there is there a smell button on the, the screen? Can, is there a lick button? Is, can I say oh, that's like so you, beautiful. That's a lovely. Thank so, you very much. You're welcome. So, do you take your own photos? Yes, oh, you do. I I do everything myself. So okay. that's the, you know I I took the recipe. I take the pictures. I you know I edit my pictures. Um, and then I write the recipes. So all the food styling that you see on my on my photography is is mine um i have learned a lot over the years because if you see the beginning of my instagram feed it's not as a it does the the pictures don't look as appetizing as the ones that i do now yes. but i think that that's the you know the good thing about it you know i have actually learned a lot during the process of doing my blog is still really bad at IT. So it's okay. It's okay. You you cook really well and your photos are beautiful. That's okay. You can you can hire people to do that. It's all right. Because your your food is gorgeous. And you do have this picture of almond mole. What is almond yes. mole? Like I, I and I'm mole mama so I am like what is almond mole? Well you know I you know, I made that mole during the during lockdown. I have a friend, Renata uh, Bar Barrios. Uh, she lives in Mexico City, and she once put on her feet uh, that don't be afraid to make a mole because we all think that mole, you know, which is a Mexican sauce, is a very elaborate uh, sauce with lots of I mean, not hundreds, but I mean, lots of ingredients. Right. Um, but if you actually read the recipes for a good mole, they all have like the kind of important ingredients. So I made my own. Good for it you. It tasted really good. That's awesome. <laughs> I have to check out that recipe because I saw it. Oh, I need to try that because I love almonds. I love spicy stuff. So. Yes. so instead of adding, you know, instead of, there's actually an almond mole in Oaxaca. So I thought, well, I'm not, you know, put peanuts because I didn't have peanuts at that time. So I use almonds instead. And then I use uh, two type of uh, Mexican chilies only when sometimes they use three or four. Mm -hmm. And... I use banana uh, or plantain. Um, instead, I, I I did it very basic for people that have never done a mole before, and for with things that you can actually probably have in your cupboard. That's uh, outstanding. Yeah, it was amazing. 
and my husband here at home everybody loved it and i still do it uh, you know but that, that my, my, my recipe to say that i feel very proud of it <laughs> that's fantastic you know i have to try it um I recently did a 30 minute mole too, because also something simple that my mother would make was all dried ingredients. So you could get it on Amazon, but it's still really delicious. So it's, it's easy, but it's yeah. good. Yeah, um, because you know the, the mole recipes, I mean, they're lovely, but they take a long time to make mm -hmm. and they have like too many ingredients. And everything needs to be, you know, either toast or fried and oh my god it's just it's hard yeah it's hard work yeah I have to, if you have a recipe or a family recipe um yeah look after it because it's it's a precious dish in mexico it is it is a very precious and that's why my name is mole ma because i feel like my mother's mole was unbelievable and I also think, feel like it's something that unites us because in the Mexican culture, mole is so important. And I feel mm -hmm. like everybody that I meet, they feel like their mother or their abuelita or some had the best one. So I feel like it's the best in all of us. Is yeah, mole. I hear in my family that one that used to actually make mole from scratch was my, my dad's mom because she was from the state of Michoacan. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we used to go in the weekends to see her and she would sometimes would have a mole that she had actually done from scratch. But I did she, did, did she, sorry to interrupt you, but did she have, did she make a sweet mole or a savory one? It was more of a sweet mole with a hint of, as, you know, of, of a, a bit of a spice in it. Mm -hmm. But yes, I do remember that she was really good at it. And because my mom's family are from Sinaloa, um, they have all their influences there. And I, I don't know, I don't think that my grandma, my mama Mila, who used to actually make mole. So yeah. we used to actually have all the stuff. So my mother's is savory and very spicy and four different types of chili. So I have that, that recipe also on my YouTube channel. But as you said, it takes so much work. It's, it's yeah. really, and it's delicious, but oh my, it's just a, yeah. a lot So of my, my, my recipe, the only thing that it takes the longer it was the cooking, but the, the making the mole was really very straightforward. Okay. So I, I really like that about the mole and I really appreciate that, you know, the advice that my friend Renata gave me that don't be afraid of making your own mole sauce. And I love that. Yes, she, she's a chef and she's really good. Okay, so I'm definitely going to try that because I, I am all, I love moles, so I need to try that one because I saw that and I'd never seen almond mole. All right, so what is um, one of the, your all-time most popular recipes on your blog? My barbacoa. Really? Uh, yes, I made this barbacoa Sinaloa style. And uh, everybody, you know, a lot of people has, have done that recipe. And also it is very popular among my friends. And I love it because it's, I love uh, slow cooking. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is a magic behind slow cooking because even though you just put everything in a pot and you forget about it, you know, if you don't really look after the dish and if you don't really care and make it nice with love, it could turn out really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so my barbacoa, uh, I love barbacoa. I, um, I'm so sorry to say this, but I'm a carnivorous. No, and it's okay. <laughs> Me too. I grew up on a farm. I so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm also a carnivore. Yes, same here. So 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 yes, I love the slow cooking dishes like barbacoa, birria, cochinita pibil. But my barbacoa Sinaloa style is my favorite dish, and it's very simple to make, but the 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 end result is amazing 
Okay. So can you tell our listeners a little bit more about it? Do you use beef? Are you like, I use lamb. You use and lamb. I use, yes. Two types of chilies. I use guajillo and uh, ancho. And then I use fresh tomato, onion, garlic, and lots of spices and beer and a little bit of vinegar. Yes. Oh. So you make this marinade with all these, you know, with all these ingredients. Right. You just uh, leave the lamb to marinate ideally overnight. And then the following day, you just, yes, put it in the oven. Obviously, if you were in Mexico, you will dig a hole yes. in your garden. Yes. And uh, you probably would use some sort of like a uh, maguey uh, leaves or something. Mm. But I'm not in London. I'm not going to be in the <laughs> right. garden. So I put it in the oven. <laughs> that sounds yes. very sim similar to a recipe that my mother used to make. But I know that my mother's cooking was really influenced by Sinaloa because they're a people that she knew. Um, and I remember too, that when she would make her lamb dish, the way, or any of her barbacoas, the way the house smelled. So when you're talking about the slow cooking to me, it's, it's the house just like lights up and there's just a smell. It's like, Oh yeah. And you know, I, I love the, fa uh, I love, to see the expressions on my friends' face when they arrive home uh, to my house, when I invite them to for a barbacoa, it's like, and they all go like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> and that's so good. And it's just, it, it's, it, those are dishes that you do make with, with love. Yes, and, I agree. And those are the dishes that people enjoy the, 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 the most. Because you sit together and you eat together and you chat and I, I yes, yeah. for me I, that is good Mexican cooking there at Barbacoa. I absolutely agree with you. And when you're talking about the hole and digging the hole in Mexico, I was trying to explain to my husband recently because he, he is not a Latino about my family when they would make carnitas and they would dig the giant hole and we'd have a big huge copper pot and like there's nothing like that like i just can't even be impressed. I, my, my dad you know my dad used to make oh. a hole every time we used to make barbacoa at home yes. he actually used to dig a hole with his with my other relatives my uncles oh. and um yeah and we used to make barbacoa the, the, the traditional way, but here in London, obviously not. <laughs> no, and not in San Diego. I'm not digging a hole in my yard either. Although, so although I have good. to say that I have a, a Mexican friend that he always comes into my gatherings and he's like always saying, I got like, we should actually dig a hole in your garden. <laughs> we should make it. He was like, no, are you crazy? Where are we gonna get like these maguey stuff? No, it's around? and so yeah. But you know, if you have a really nice good um, pot, and you can put it in the oven, or these days you can buy these. Um, how do you call it? hot pot? An instapot. Like I haven't instapot. done that. I, I know there's I, a lot of people cooking with them, and I, I just my. I'm an old school as well, so I have my casserole dishes. Uh, or Dutch ovens that you call in America. Yep. So I have these really heavy pots that I use. So they, they're really good at it. They're really good for this type sort of thing. I agree. And I think for me, I know my husband's been like, don't you want an Instapot? I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't. And I, and I think that, you know, they're great because they cut down on time and I know people love them. But for me, it's that, like that slow simmering, the smell that's going to be in my house. It's that part of that whole experience that I. Yeah. Just, you know, and I love uh, from time to time to go and see, like, uh, I, you know, I lift the lid and see how the meat is doing. And I put back the lid and it's just fun, to be honest. Yeah. 
I agree. It's really fun. All right. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about the online cooking classes that you offer? Because that's super cool that you can actually come and you can cook online together. Well, because of COVID-19, I had to like um, change the way I work. So before, uh, people were coming to my house and we would cook together either a proper Mexican cooking class with several dishes or uh, do a tortilla workshop. But um, at the moment, you know, we can't really gather. <laughs> so whenever somebody wants to have a cooking class, uh, they can contact me and then we can have the cooking class through Zoom. Um, That's fantastic. And it's really good because I can, you know, I can see what you're doing you can see what I'm doing and even though you, we're not physically together, I can still give you advice and it's really fun. I really enjoy it. So I might need to do that with you because I still can't make round tortillas. <gasps> like, I can't make them round. Like my mother, I don't know how, poor woman, she tried to teach <laughs> do it and now when I make them and I photograph them I always have to like position them in a certain way and cover them with the towel so you can't really see that they're all these Uh, weird shapes so it's it's tricky to be honest I'm 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 gonna say that I I when I first came to London because you know when you live in Mexico you go to a tortilleria and uh and you go to a tortilleria and uh, and you buy your tortillas in the tortilleria, and it's it's fine. You don't you don't really make you don't really need to make tortillas. Right. So so when when I came to London and I couldn't actually find proper good corn tortillas, that's how my necessity uh, to learn how to make good corn tortillas was born (laughs) and I practice and practice and practice and now I'm really good at it I I believe me I may I could make like 60 tortillas in in half an hour or something I really it's just it's just a matter of practice practice makes perfect so and if you haven't had a homemade tortilla, there's nothing like it, right? It's just like, yes, it's... Exactly. And that's the other just, thing. If you have never made your own tortillas, I mean, I know that there's a, there will be always a difference for us that we live abroad. Because when you make your own tortillas in Mexico, you can either mix them your own corn and make your dough from scratch or you can go and buy the dough from a tortilleria here. And I'm sure that you're kind of in the same situation. We have to use fl- corn flour, make mm-hmm. mixed analyzed corn, corn flour in order to make tortillas. But even so, you know, if you find a good quality corn flour, you can make really good tortillas. I agree. So, but believe me, practice. Uh, Every okay, day, practice. try to practice a little bit. And, you know, watch my video. I have a video on. I'm gonna. I need to watch your video to see if I get some tips on making these round tortillas. And uh, oh my god, my husband would love it if I made them every day. So <laughs> practicing. But you know, I do remember when I started to make tortillas for my husband, and he would be. He, my my husband is English as well, and. But he's been to he's been to Mexico many times, so he knows what a good tortilla is. Uh, and he, but he would be really nice to me. He would just say like, "Oh yeah, they're fine. They're like really nice." <laughs> but then I have my Mexican friends that would say to me, "Yeah, uh, like, you don't know how to make tortillas. <laughs> You're so rubbish at it." And then now eventually, I mastered the art of making tortillas. Well, congratulations. Okay. That's yes, a good my art. Kids, you know, my children also make tortillas with me. Aww. And sometimes, you know, we do it as a, like a, like a family activity. So my husband helps, they help, and it's really fun. You yes. know, everybody should be making their own tortillas. 
Okay, I'm going to watch that video because like I said, yeah. no, I can't do the round thing. All right. So what has been the biggest surprise for you since you started your food blog? Uh, um, oh, the amount of lovely people that follow me. You know, I have actually, I feel very happy of all the lovely people that I have met through this um through this process, you know, since I started, I have made good friends. I have lovely friends, not only here in the UK, but in around the world. And I have, I mean, I don't consider myself as a, like, as a celebrity, but my husband said that I, sometimes I kind of am. But people, you know, they're so nice. That's awesome. And, um, they like what I do and they follow me and they comment and I love the little community that I have created with my love for Mexican food. And believe me, when I cook, I know I cook recipes that probably a lot of people know how to cook because they're at the end of the day, they're food memories from Mexico. Mm but I do cook with my heart and you know, I love reading the comments that people leave me or say when they send me an email saying that, oh, you know what you cook today, it really remind me when I was a child mm -hmm. and it made me feel so special. So yeah, that That's is lovely. the most surprising and amazing thing that to see how food can um, bring people together. It's just something, it's something actually makes you like really sentimental. I agree. Yeah. And, and I'm so grateful that I found you because I was like, <laughs> oh, she's doing food memories. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I agree. Food is a connector. It definitely mm. connects us in so many different ways. And I also think it does it breaks down barriers, right? Yes. Like, I really think that it does and brings us together, so. Yeah, and then especially during these difficult times, you know, yes. food for me has been the bridge between, you know, between uh, to cope with what's happening. And for me, what I'm doing, the, cook, the food that I cook, has is, has been like um like this like this glue that you know joins me with other people and yeah and everybody is probably feeling the same as me that you know at the moment that we because of food we can just maybe forget a bit of, of about the bad things that are happening around. I, I definitely agree. I've been cooking a lot more things completely from scratch um, yeah. that I'd never even tried before. Like I had never made my own pizza dough. I, um, and wow, it's actually turned out. It was like, it was really good. So, um, and, and just, I think celebrating mm. the simple things a little bit more. Yes, exactly. I think during this time, we have learned um, to appreciate the simple things. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that I'm sure or I hope that after this, you know, humanity learns something good about what's, about what's happening. But I'm sure we will. To be honest. I do too. I do too. And what's important and like what's yeah. really important, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So it has, so it's been so lovely chatting with you, Carla. Is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners? Please, before I forget, please go over to Mexico Food Memories. Check out her site. It is gorgeous. You're, you're just going to love it. And Thanks. sign up for a class. I mean, this is a great time. We're all home. <laughs> sign up for a class. Yeah, thank you very much. No, I just 
you know, I just want to thank you again for inviting me and having me here. It's such a lovely thing that you're doing. I really love meeting people like you that have been have been shared the same passion for food like me, especially about Mexican food. And it's just nice to be able to talk uh, with somebody about our childhood experiences with food and stuff like that. It's, it's just really fun. You, It makes you feel good, right? Yes, it does. So thank you for saying yes and continue to shine. And I hope that your classes go very, very well for you. Oh, and thank you. if I ever make it up back to London, I'm going to look you up. So just be, be, be. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, you can sometimes come to my supper classes. I also do supper classes. Well, if, if this, you know, if we can do supper clubs again. Um, yes. So I, I love having people around my table. I love feeding people and I love the atmosphere the when people gather to eat something nice i i love that feeling that uh, a good food makes you know gives to people so yeah thank you very much for having me Diana. you're welcome carla All right for our listeners thank you so much for joining us remember to add the most important ingredient to every recipe you make your love and as my mama always said to me as we said our goodbyes, que Dios te bendiga, may God bless you, and thank you everyone.